All right, welcome to a lazy edit. It has been a while. Previously, I had spent a lot of time creating uh, this little orange character. I wanted to use him to try to animate stuff, which turned out to be a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be. And as it turns out, there were also a lot of issues that came with that, mostly clipping issues, which was the result of meshes overlapping. And that's kind of the result of me having the character on the bottom and having clothes on top, which turns out to be a really big problem. So what I had to do was cut my character into tiny little pieces. And if I made something like clothes, I would just swap out the version that didn't have clothes for the version that did. And then we can just delete all the parts that we can't see. So just a lot of the body, like the chest or the legs, are gone because we don't need them. And here's how the character looks. It's a little bit weird just being in a void, so I thought I would add a little room to be in. But now, when we look at the room, we can tell that there's not a lot of shading going on because so far it's done through an unlit shader, which is basically just the textures. So I think the next thing we should probably do is start working on shaders. Now for the longest time, I've been working on Unity, but you can make shaders in practically anything. Here's me making a, a tune shader in Unreal Engine. All we're essentially doing is just grabbing the light source and then putting it through a filter that shrinks and creates contrast in the light before we just uh, throw it back in and start adding our textures. This kind of tune shader effect is a little bit easier to see in Blender where we can actually mess around with stuff. All we're essentially doing is shortening the gradient until we get a very harsh transition between the two colors. Now, um, why did I use examples that weren't Unity for this specific situation? Well, as it turns out, Unity does not have a very good shader graph yet. I mean, it has a shader graph. You could definitely mess around with stuff, but there are just some values that it doesn't have at the moment that I would really appreciate if it did have. One of them is just the ability to grab light from your scene, which it doesn't have. So you gotta code that in yourself. But I mean, eventually we got it working. It just gave us a little bit of problems, but this is how our toon shader looks. I think the toon shader turned out all right. For the, for the longest time, I've been trying to talk about cell shading, but I just don't have the experience yet to talk about that in a manner that's coherent. So we're just not gonna dive into shaders that deeply. Maybe another time. For now, we have even bigger problems. Originally, this character was designed to move around with the keyboard and mouse, which turned out to be a pretty good test run, but I kinda got tired of it. It has some problems. I think one of the biggest problems is just that it's too rigid. I tried traditional animation, which is way too time intensive, but then I found out about inverse kinematics, which is a way of controlling one bone in your rig, which then controls a set of other bones in your rig. Kind of like you're grabbing the end of a metal chain and the rest is just kind of dangling along with it. And you can see the practical application when we control the hand and we're able to move the entire arm with it. So what if we used our VR headset to control that one bone and then everything else can follow? The problem is that my character is very small about half my size. And so if I tried to do it right now, like the character's arms would reach up, trying to reach where I'm grabbing and look up where I would be looking. And I mean, for this, all I'm gonna do is just shrink myself down to about half of my height in order to align myself with a character. And that works. Now, all we have to do is parent that bone's position and rotation to the position and rotation of our headset and our controllers. And there it is. I think that instantly just adds a lot more character already. And look, I know I made it look kind of easy, I hope, I think, but there are a lot of bugs in the way. As it turns out, not being able to see the monitor that you are using to sort of fix all the problems that you're having while also having a headset on your face where you have all the problems that are occurring are not a good combination. And it probably didn't help that there are some very strange glitches that occurred with my headset. But in the end, it worked out. I added a little flooring and a chair. It's relatively empty at the moment, but here's a little test of all the stuff working. It sure is empty though. I don't have anything there yet. I, I, th there's nothing set up. And uh, right now, I'm just having fun with the fact that I can move the character now. And also there are realistic shadows. It's just a huge step up. 